Hi, my name is Indukan Joku, and your lecturer for PL446, Evidence 2. Today we are looking at another topic in the law of evidence, and that topic is competence and credibility. We are examining who is a witness, who is a competent witness, and who is a compelable witness. We are looking at the foundations for a competent witness. I hope and I believe you will enjoy today's lecture. Thank you. Once again, you are welcome to today's lecture. We are looking at competence and compatibility of witnesses. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to define a witness, a competent and a compatible witness, and also discuss the attributes of a competent witness. Who is a witness? A witness is a person called to give oral evidence in court. That is the person. If something happens, if Mr. A took Mr. B to court and Mr. A called somebody to come and give oral evidence in court, the person he invited to give that, evidence, that oral evidence in court is a witness. At what point then does a witness become a competent witness? A witness is competent to give evidence if his testimony is admissible. So if a witness testimony is admissible in court, he is then a competent witness. At what point then does he become compelable? A witness is compelable if he can be obliged to go into the witness box at the pain or contempt of court. So he is common to summoned by the court to come and give evidence and he fails to do so then the court can charge him for contempt but if the court cannot issue him such a subpoena then he's not a compelable witness what then is the ground for competency for that purpose we will look at section 175 of the evidence act that section says subsection 1 says all persons shall be competent to testify unless the court consider that they are prevented from understanding the questions put to them or from giving rational answers to these patients to those patients by reason of tender years extreme old age disease whether whether of body or mind any other cause of the same kind a person of unsound mind is not incompetent to testify unless he is prevented by his mental infirmity from understanding the questions put to him and giving rational answers to them that's subsection 2. so the law presumes that every sane adult is competent to give evidence so but if somebody is precluded from understanding the questions put to him and providing rational answers to those patients as a result of tender years or extreme old age or as a result of sickness without the body of the mind then that person ceases to be competent so the basis of competent is for somebody to be able to understand the questions that was put to him and to provide rational answers to those questions we may have to look at the case of Alvaro Onyeke a dumb person can can be a witness in court by virtue of section 176 of the evidence i said a witness who is unable to speak may give his evidence in any other manner in which he can make it intelligible as by writing or by signs but such writing must be written and the sign made in the open court such such subsection 2 evidence so given shall be deemed to be oral evidence so a dumb person can give oral evidence in court if he can reduce his evidence into writing or sign but those the writing and the sign must be done in open court a convict is competent to give evidence by virtue of the case of Aru versus Onike. an accomplice is also a competent witness to give evidence against the accused person 
A diplomat is a competent witness, but is not compelable to give evidence. Now, competence is not lost merely because the person had listened to part or all the testimony of the other witnesses in the case. Look at the case of a character versus AK 1926, Nigeria 7, Nigeria Law Report at 73. At the next slide, we'll be expected to provide answer to the question provided therein. Discuss competence and compatibility. Let's look at the testimony of children. We have seen that all sane adults are competent witnesses. And the law did not prescribe age, a specific age for a child to give evidence. All the law says is that a child is competent to give evidence if it's one understand the question put to him and secondly provide rational answers to these questions for this purpose the court conducts preliminary tests to determine first whether the child is or is possessed of sufficient intelligence to um, to provide rational answers to questions put to him for this purpose the, the court asks the child certain questions they, 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 that are that is not that are not related to the, to the case in court, the court can ask the child the name of, of, of her parents, his or her parents, or the name of his school. If the child scales this, this stage, this preliminary test, then the court will then must note it in, in, his, in his record that the child is possessed of sufficient intelligence to understand the questions put to him and provide rational answers to, uh, to those questions. The court, the court then goes forward to determine whether the child understands the nature of an oath. For this purpose, the child, the, the court will then ask the child whether he understands the purpose, the nature of oath, and the essence of telling the truth. If the child does not skill this purpose, this second uh, test, he still he can give evidence in court, but he cannot give sworn evidence. Let's look at the case of police versus someone for that purpose. Now let's look at all persons and parties to the suit. Now by virtue of section 178, first and foremost, all persons can give evidence in court. The court will have to undertake a test we conduct a test to determine whether that old person understand the question put to him and provide rational answers to them or the old the old person may not be able to understand the question put to him and provide rational answers to those questions by virtue of extreme old age so the fact that an individual is very old does not if so far to mean that is incapable or is not competent to give evidence but if as a result of his extreme old age he is unable to understand the patients put to him and provide rational answers to them, then he cannot give evidence. By virtue of section 178, subject to the exceptions applicable by virtue of section 165 of this act, in all civil proceedings, the parties to the suit and the husband or wife of the any party to the suit shall be competent witnesses. Subsection, section 179 says, subject to this part, in criminal cases, the defendant and his wife her husband, as the case may be, or any person jointly charged with such defendant and tried at the same time, and the wife and hus husband of that person so jointly charged is competent to testify. So, parties to the suit and their spouses, their husband and their wife, are competent witnesses in suits. In this class activity, you are requested to discuss the testimony of children legal practitioner what is the position of the law with respect to legal practitioners does the law permit legal practitioners to give evidence in respect of a matter in which they are counsel now 
the law is that there's nothing in the evidence act that prevents a counsel from giving evidence for the plaintiff or claimant he is representing but this is undesirable because the counsel should not put himself in the embarrassing position of counsel and witness in the same matter look at the case of Idu versus Adekoya 1960 Western Nigeria Law Report page 210 what of judges and chief executives president and governors are competent witnesses but they are not compelable so a president is a competent witness a governor is a competent witness but they are not compelable now let's look at what is the position with respect to judges are judges competent witnesses or are they not by virtue of section 188 he said no justice judge grand cardi or president of the customary court of appeal and except upon the special order of the high court of the state federal capital territory abuja or federal high court no magistrate or other persons before whom a proceeding is being held shall be compelled to answer any question as to his own conduct in court in any of the capacities specified in this section or as to anything which came to his knowledge in court in such capacity but he may be examined as to other matters which occurred in his presence which he was so acting so a judge cannot be compelled a justice cannot be compelled to give evidence or give testimony or be a witness in respect of his official conduct in respect of a matter now in this lecture we have been able to look at competence and compelability of witnesses we have seen who is a witness and the conditions of being a competent witness as well as a compelable witness we have also seen that ability to understand patients put to a, to a, to, to a witness and provide rational answers to those patients are actually the basis of being a competent witness i hope you have enjoyed today's lecture thank you